Methodist Church this first Sunday after Christmas. It's a blessing to have each one of you here. Looking ahead at our announcements, just a brief overview. Uh, we'll be doing uh, the Tornado Disaster Relief Fund. A love offering will be collected. Donations will be accepted through the church till January 2nd. So please designate that, and you can place it in the offering plates either at the front or back of this uh, church. Uh, Epiphany Open House, so uh, Rev. Rita and Mr. Bill rescheduled their open house for uh, this coming Saturday, January, or not this Saturday? No, the next Saturday, and uh, two Saturdays from now. Um, on January the 8th from 2 to 5, just give them a quick RSVP, uh, and her number and email are listed below with all the beautiful trains and houses all lit up for Christmas and, well, now Epiphany. Uh, a study of the perils, parables, Rev. Rita will be teaching a series to our adult Sunday school class on the parables, so all are welcome, and that will begin next Sunday, January the 2nd. A new member's brunch uh, is uh, set for 10 a.m. on January the 9th, so during our Sunday school hour, it says Sunday school will welcome our new members. Uh, UMYF Alding will be going to the City Forum in Clarksville on January the 2nd where there's lots of games and, and fellowship together. Uh, just email um, Ms. Holly if you have any questions. Uh, cons are still available and then have Charlotte's contact number and Charlotte's here today if you have any questions and you get any last minute uh, pecans for more family gatherings. Our prayer shawl um, meeting will be, if anybody that's interested in, uh, they'll meet at the church on the January 4th at 4 o'clock. And of course, our uh, December communion offering um, for the whole month of December was designated to Pope in Rockford, Robertson County, so if you feel led to donate to that, just specify in, um, in, for the offering plates. And as always, we have our nursery available when the children are, uh, after children's sermon, uh, will be dismissed. Any other announcements before any prayer concerns? I want to just clarify yes, that for a minute. Friends, that tornado disaster uh, response fund, you're welcome to continue to give to that. You know, that was our offering for Christmas Eve, but it can continue through the second. But just make sure you designate that so we know. After, because that service on Christmas Eve, we knew all the monies that we received that night was to go to that. But anything we receive after that, we need to know is it is it going to be for our December uh, offering? Is it going to be for the tornado relief, or is it going to be for our general offering? So make sure that you uh, separate that out for us. And as we enter for prayer concerns, I have two listed to add to our bulletin. Uh, Susan Robertson has been diagnosed with COVID, so we want to lift up to Susan. And then um, Connor Lambertson's father, Michael, suffered from a stroke, and it is out of the ICU but still hospitalized. So we want to lift up Mr. Michael during this time. And then I know there's other several family members and church family that are sick during this holiday season, so we'll lift them up in our prayers. Is there any others to bring forward? Well, we'll have our time of prayer here shortly. Let's uh, though we'll open up our worship with a hymn of praise, Joy to the World. And just to see, it looks like one, two, three, and four, so please stand as you are able.
Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. that we would share with our God today, knowing that he hears our prayers and answers them. I would invite you to bow now for just a time of silent prayer. Just speak to God today, give thanksgiving, rejoice, and share your needs with God, and then I will lead us in our prayer. Let us pray. <laughs>
for our world, peace for our nation, peace for our hearts today. And in all things, we will give you thanks for being such a wonderful God. We ask all of these things today in the name of Christ our Lord, who came as the Prince of Peace, as we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
it's time for our children's sermon. Remember to bring a toy with you if you brought a toy. Do you want to come join us? All right. Amen. Oh, that is so cool. And the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Brother, I brought one of Brother Jason's Christmas toys from Christmas past. It's Snoopy. As you can see, it was one of his beloved toys that went with him everywhere. And then I had to dig this one out this morning. She's not her original dress. This is baby Victoria. I got her when I was about nine. I loved her very much. So, all of you are excited to get your new toys, right? What is the hardest thing about a new toy? Mm -hmm. Well, keeping them picked up, that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> Sharing, is that hard? Now, some of our toys, like that, some of those things that we get sometimes aren't the best to share with everybody because you have to be extra careful because some of you got some things that you got to kind of know how to use properly. But our toys, we've got to share. Is that hard when it's brand new? Yes, it is hard when it's brand new. I bet Brother Jason didn't ever want to share Snoopy there. <laughs> He's got a hold of it pretty good. I didn't mind. I had a friend who had a baby doll just like baby Victoria, so I didn't have to share her because we both had matching babies. Um, but sharing, that's a hard thing. But I want to remind you, it was Christmas, and we all get excited, but who was Christmas really about? Jesus. It was about baby Jesus. And that, God gave us the best gift of all on Christmas. And that was baby Jesus. To show us how much God loves us. So when you play with your toy, sometimes when you're having fun, go, you know what? God loves me more than I love this toy. And that's pretty, that's a whole lot, isn't it? Okay, so I think that Reverend and Brother Jason, we're just going to kind of Go around and they're gonna look at your toys and they're just gonna they're just gonna say bless to your toy. Some of you are gonna even bless that you stay safe and use responsibly and things like that too. Yeah. Thank you better bless Snoopy too. Yes. Oh yes. Snoopy and, and can you bless baby Victoria? Yes. They've had hard lives. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think she's We've got a couple of people who can't see. She doesn't even cry anymore. She used to kind of cry. <laughs> Are you going to share, Brother Jason? Yes, I'll share. All right, guys, so we're going to pray now, okay? Will you please bow your hands? Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for all the toys that we got. Thank you for our families. And thank you for the best gift. Jesus, your son. We love you, God. Amen. Merry day after Christmas. Oh, don't put it fast. 
Today we hear the word of the Lord with great joy. We go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 15 through 19. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about them, about this child, told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, <coughs> verses 13 through 15. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Thanks be to God indeed. Morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I wanted to share with you a greeting from the Eastern Orthodox Church this Sunday after Christmas, the way they greet each other around Christmas time, the Christmas tide season. They say, Christ is born, and the response is, glorify him. Can we try that today? We can. Christ is born. Yeah. Glorify him. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. It's good to see everyone again so soon. That was quick, right? <laughs> feel like we were just here. It's because we were. Maybe, what, about 36 hours ago? The way it fell this, this, uh, this calendar year. Uh, it all happened in, on the weekend here. But it is good to see everyone after just a short time away. Um, you know, in the wee hours of yesterday morning, we slipped into another season of the church. I guess you all know this. You know, I'm going to teach you about the liturgical calendar. So we went from Advent to Christmas to the Christmas tide season. Today's the first Sunday after Christmas. And this year, like you know, both Christmas Day and the Sunday after Christmas occur during the weekend. This means many people haven't returned to work yet or to normal activities, what you would call normal in the routine uh, of your days. Are many of you still not sure what day it is? We had this conversation. Many people are, are feeling it too. We're like, I don't know what day it is. Um, you know, it just, it was only yesterday that we were traveling, we were gathering, we were feasting, we were unwrapping, and we were napping, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not all of you, but some of us were. And wasn't the weather amazing yesterday? I mean, yeah, I thought about children that got presents that they could play outside with. Now, I like a little cold weather and snow at Christmas time, but it was nice I felt like saying Meli Kaliki Maka. <laughs> so I hope you all had a good day celebrating and, and really remembering why we celebrate. Because it's the birth of Jesus. And so now with the, the first of the work week looming and the eventual return to everyday life, I want to spend a moment talking about keeping Christmas. Because isn't that hard to do, friends? To keep Christmas, you know, it just it flies by so fast, and then we, we, we want to keep it. Don't you want to keep it? But a month or two goes by, and we long for it again because we haven't been able to keep it. So let's talk about how that looks like, what that looks like. 
You know, we need to try to see Christmas as a daily gift. Christmas means we're loved so much that God sent His Son to save us and to be with us always, not just on a day. Christmas means there will always be light in the darkness and there will always be hope for the hopeless. And so to live in a way that keeps these truths in our mind is perhaps one of the best gifts. The gift that keeps on giving the whole year. I'm not talking about the jelly of the month club. <laughs> the 12 days of Christmas tide are a perfect way to start off the year, really. I love the way we do this in the United Methodist Church. We're savoring. We're savoring. Y'all ever do that? You get a really good piece of candy or cake. Or you, you, you take little bites. You, know, you want to savor it. You, you know when it's gone, it's gone. So we want to savor this all year long. Um, in a world that all too quickly moves us back moves us from the revelry back to the routine, right? And it seems like we spend more time preparing for Christmas rather than living into the miracle of Christmas. Could y'all agree with that? Spend more time getting ready for it than living into it and, and savoring it. We learn today, we need to remember from our scripture, the shepherds went back to work. Did you catch that? Didn't the shepherds go back to work? We're going to learn today that even Mary and Joseph didn't have long to savor in the stable before the world invaded their peace. And they found themselves having to react and to respond to the realities of life. It sounds like us sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, really. Let's be real. If you know me, I'm going to be real with you. So join us today, like the shepherds, we, we're leaving the manger scene and we're returning to life soon. And that's okay. This doesn't need to be a depressing sermon. This is, we, we do life. That's what we do. So how can we do life and keep Christmas? May we learn to keep Christmas in our hearts and carry it with us whenever and wherever we go. Whatever we're going to face. Tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Which leads right into our scriptures for today. Friday night we read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. Did you enjoy that? I mean, we do that in our home. We gather around the fire, around the chair, and we read that. We read the night before Christmas, and we read Luke chapter 2, 1 through 20. That's been our tradition for years. We learned how the, the shepherds departed the stables to spread the word about Jesus' birth. And Mary, remember, treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. But the moment didn't last long because in our other scripture today we read not from Luke chapter 2, but from Matthew chapter 2. Matthew's version of some of these events. And we learned that after the wise men had gone, an angel warned, warned Jesus in a dream, or Joseph in a dream, to get up. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And I think many of us, you know, we can relate to the, the way life doesn't always allow us much time in the moment. Right? While I prefer the pondering and the savoring, I do appreciate that the Bible doesn't gloss over the fact that this story deals with real people Dealing with real problems in life. And these problems don't let up even for the Holy Family. Even for Jesus. So it is with us. Doesn't it seem surreal that just 36 hours ago we were gathered in this sanctuary. We lit our candles from the Christ candle until the room was all aglow. I love that time of year. The sound of silent night filling the air. and You know, that was a really all too brief moment. You know there's only four stanzas in that hymn. And you know when you get to the fourth one, you, what do you got to do? You got to blow your candle out. I don't want to blow my candle out. <laughs> I think I shared that with you. I was like, when you blow this candle out, remember the light of Christ is still in you. Okay? But still, I want to just stand there a little bit longer. Because heaven and earth really seem poised to meet as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. It's my favorite service of the year. I know it's probably many of y'all's too. We look forward to it all year. But, you know, these special moments are fleeting. And about the time I 
I begin to savor the moment, the last stanza is sung, the house lights come up, the candles go out, and then for my family and perhaps for yours, it's off to the holiday races. It's calmed down a little bit, but when they were little, we went everywhere, saw everybody, did everything. Seems like when you have kids, that's what you do, right? Does everybody live that life? Some of you may be living it still. You know, many have uh, places to be, traditions to uphold, food to eat, presents to open. It is a frenzy, a frenzy of activity. And after it's all over, I like to sit quietly in a dimly lit room with just the glow of the Christmas tree that's going to come down soon and, and try to process the whirlwind that's Christmas. Anybody try to do that impossible thing? To just ponder and treasure in your heart? I try to take a moment to reflect. You know, and, and then those peaceful moments of Luke chapter 2 give way to the realities of living in a Matthew chapter 2 world. So how do we get back to the pondering in our heart when our hearts are broken, when our hearts are pounding or worried or anxious about tomorrow? Perhaps the answer is found not in the fleeting stillness but amid the chaos of everyday life because that's where Christmas lives in reality. It's not in the moment when we feel nostalgic, but it's as a means to see the light of Christ in all of our everyday moments. For we know, as John chapter 1 reminds us, the light of Christ shines out in the darkness, and the darkness will never overcome it. The world seems like it's out to get us sometimes, though, doesn't it? Not right now. We're still in the glow of the Christmas time, but the week's coming. For many, the stress of the holidays are jobs, family drama, an unexpected diagnosis or illness. Struggles to pay the bills, loss of a loved one, grief, uncertainty, disappointment. These things make it difficult to feel like celebrating. And, and I think we do need to take a moment to realize there are people in this room that have dealt with that this season, that have dealt with that before, that may deal with that at some point. Let's get real. I told you. I'll get real with you. There's just so much that competes for our attention tries to steal our joy and distract us from the things that matter most. Yeah, I want to tell you a story. A few years ago, uh, I used to be somebody that if anything messed up my Christmas spirit, I was ruined. You ever be like that? Like, I didn't get this, and I didn't get to hear this, and I didn't do that, and so it's just, a, it's ruined. <coughs> I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that, but I was... I was bad about that. I had to do all these certain things in a certain order. And if anything got in the way of it, I had to start all over again. I had to get to a place. I had to. You get what I'm getting here? But a few years ago, I, I received word that someone in the congregation where I was serving was seriously ill and in the hospital on Christmas Eve. I had places to go, traditions to uphold, things to do. So that I could stay in that bliss of Christmas. Because that's what it's all about, right? Is my feelings and my nostalgia. And doing all these things that tradition says we need to do. And so I was a little bit, I'm not ashamed to admit it, concerned, but also put out. Why do I, you know, of all nights, I've got to go <coughs> to the hospital. But I entered that hospital room and went past darkened doors into the hospital. I paused. I really saw a lot of sad looks coming up from waiting rooms and whispers of faint prayers in quiet corners. And I, it was a foreign landscape to my usual Christmas merriment. And then I realized this, this happens. This goes on on Christmas. There was no laughter, no gifts, only footsteps echoing down corridors and the heaviness of worry in the air. And in my pocket, I carried a vial of fragrant oil that I had picked up that, that year, actually, at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. I think I've shared that with you. That just steps from where tradition says Jesus was actually born, entered the world, entered creation. And I had no idea that I would be using that oil to anoint and pray over someone that I dearly loved who lay in that hospital bed on the eve of Christ's birth. But, you know, in the stark... And the foreign landscape of a hospital room at Christmas time. 
Love came down to meet us where we were, friends. Love was there. The sweet aroma of that oil mingled with our prayers, and we lifted them up to God in the name of Jesus, and it really was a holy moment, and perhaps even more special to me than the sight of seeing all of you holding candles and singing Silent Night. There was a certainty in that moment of Christ's abiding presence and unfailing love that's always with us. You know, as I drove home that night, I thought about others who might be celebrating Christmas that way, not the way they had envisioned. Life has a way of changing our plans, and sometimes we get sick and we hear bad news and we're lonely. We're dealing with a lot. Matthew chapter 2, world. But in those moments, we, we find it sometimes hard to muster up some Christmas cheer. But you know, when you strip Christmas down of all of its regal elements, the familiar, the festive, and the nostalgic, nostalgic Christ comes anyway. Amen? Christ comes anyway. And I'm so glad he does because that's, I think, when we need Christ the most. Not when everything's perfect. Let me tell you something else. Christ came anyway. And Christ came all the way. All the way. From heaven to earth. All the way from the manger to the cross. All the way from death to eternal life. He came as a true light to each of us walking in darkness. And even to those who still flounder in it today. John said it best, the true light that gives light to everyone is coming into the world. You see, perhaps the truth of Christ's birth and what that means for each of us can be celebrated even more authentically amidst burdens and struggles and the realities of life. Because keeping Christmas means that we remember a God who loved us into being, who could not bear to be without us and who personally entered into this world as a baby, meek and mild, humble and lowly, vulnerable and innocent. He came when it wasn't convenient or perfect, when the house wasn't clean, and neither were our hearts. He came not when we were ready or prepared, nor because we were deserving of it. He came in a real way to real people who are really in trouble. Aren't you glad God did that? Yeah. Christ even now comes into our lives the same way. Only now he comes not to be born in Bethlehem, but in our hearts, every one of our hearts and lives. There's no deserving, there's no getting ready, no perfect time, no ideal circumstances. It's just our need colliding with God's grace. In spite of our emotions, our expectations, our troubles in life, and maybe because of those things, Jesus always shows up. Christmas is about the God who loves us and who comes to be with us in the midst of our struggles. God with us, not outside of our struggles. He enters our messy lives and offers us the reality of peace, hope, joy. And love. I want you to think about your life as a constant advent wreath. <laughs> it burns bright, those candles, just, uh, just like we're anticipating Christ. How about you anticipate Him every day? How about you think about all of these things that Christ brings into your life to fulfill you and make you complete? How about you think about that this little light that you have in your in your spirit it comes off that candle right there, the Christ candle. You know, we're going to put that away soon. But how about we're just walking, talking, living, breathing, witnessing Advent candles as we go through this life, as we wait for the next Christmas. I thought about that today. Whatever situation we face, whether it's in a hospital bed or surrounded by gifts and grandkids, you need to know the reality that Christ's abiding presence comes to be with us at all times. You know, for the first time in my life that Christmas Eve, I, I witnessed a Christmas that began not in the singing of Silent Night or my efforts to try to capture those fleeting moments. No matter how many Christmas cookies I could eat and bold custard, 
And Bing Crosby. Y'all got a checklist of things you got to do? It didn't come when I blew out the, the, the candle and began the holiday rush. Christmas that year, it didn't begin in the moments before sleep with a soft glow of a Christmas tree where I had time to ponder. It came amid unwelcome moments of uncertainty as I leaned over a bed and prayed in faith for Christ to come for that person. For Christ to abide with them. For Christ to be in that room. And Christ came. It was Bethlehem. Christ met us there. For me it was a Christmas I'll never forget. Because it wasn't just hymns and prophecies. And candles and presents. It was reality. And the reality is that because he was born, friends, because he lived, because he loved, because he suffered, because he died, because he rose to eternal life for each of us, we can endure those moments in life when the manger is far from our thoughts and we as shepherds have gone back to our fields and we're living in a Matthew 2 world again. More than that, with Jesus, we can conquer those moments. We can overcome them. We can cast our burdens upon Him and rest in the arms of the love of Christ that is in us, that is working through us every day. My Christmas came in an unexpected place, in an unexpected way, I mean, unexpected circumstances. And for me, I learned a valuable lesson about keeping Christmas, and I hope you'll, you'll hear this. I learned that the realities of life did not lessen the certainties of God's love. Amen? Amen? There's someone right here, right now, that needs to hear that. The realities of God's love. It's there for you. Regardless of the reality you're living in. If anything, I've learned that life is not perfect. It can be messy and broken sometimes. And into that reality came God's precious Son, full of grace and truth to bring us hope. Christmas is more than a moment to savor, more than traditions, more than a holiday, even more than time away from work and time spent with family and friends. Christmas is a promise kept. It's the fuel of our faith. It's proof of what God always intended, to be with us, to make a way to be with Him and to lead us home. So it is every time the miracle of His presence enters our lives and brings us hope. Not just at Christmas time. So how do we live in a world that has both Luke chapter 2 moments and Matthew chapter 2 realities? Isn't that the real question? By resting in the hope found in the love and in the light of Christ our Emmanuel. That's how we do it. Because God is with us. Always. The story of Christmas is a story of God's relentless love for us all. That love has no limits, no time frame, no season. God just wants to love you into life. Did you know that? God just wants to love you into life. Abundant life. You know, that life looks different than the world, than the old life. It's abundant, it's eternal, it's hopeful, it's secure. We can live it no matter what we're going through. Keeping Christmas is realizing that God will go to any length to reach you. And you know, we must do the same. A lot of times I get up here and I preach about what God's doing in your heart and in your life. And that's important. That's the first step. But once you give Him your heart and life, there's another step. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to share your gift? Right, Miss Jenny? Keeping Christmas is about the work of Christmas also. What does that look like? Well, to quote theologian, theologian Howard Thurman, 
When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star is gone in the sky, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoners, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. That's how to keep Christmas in a Matthew chapter 2 kind of world, friends. By abiding in Christ who has shown us that he wants to abide with us. To not let the world change us. Let Jesus do that. He will. And to remember that no matter how far we journey away from that manger, it never leaves our hearts. As we go through this life on the other side of Christmas morning, starting today, as work begins and chaos comes calling, may Matthew chapter 2 remind us there's work to be done. The work of Christmas. And when we are found to be busy in that work, we've truly discovered how to keep Christmas in your heart all year. The closing lines of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol say these words. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge, may that be truly said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. God has indeed blessed every one of us with the gift of his ever-abiding presence in his Son. May our hearts never fail to not only recognize that truth, but to proclaim it. To let it work in you so that you can do the work. Of Christmas. Let's end today. Instead of saying Merry Christmas, which it is, how about Christ is born and glorified? Because that's the work of Christmas. Christ is born. Glorify Him. I say these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, I think we got another hymn. Our hymn of invitation. Oh, I love this one. Go, tell it on the mountains. Can we just, we got time, can we do all three? And it's 251 in your hymnal. Why don't you stand and sing this? <laughs>
know what the benediction is going to be. First, I want you to say, I want you to know, God loves you. Thank you for coming today. I pray that the Holy Spirit has worked in your heart and life today. Let this light right here, the light that represents the light of Jesus Christ in your life, burn brightly and go. Tell them that. Tell the whole world that Jesus Christ is born, that He lives in you. And go do the work of Christmas so that you can keep it all year long. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.